Hello, everybody. Dylan Pines here with Musician on a Mission. Today, I've got another mix trick for you. Today, we're talking about one of the most common calling cards of amateur mixes that I see as a teacher, and that is a vocal mix that is too loud. It's basically where people send me tracks, I listen to them, and I'm like, yeah, you know, the vocals, they sound great, but I can't hear the rest of the instruments. It's out of whack. Why is that? Well, the reason is because most professional mixes don't actually have the volume of that vocal very high, but they have created the illusion of loudness by completing three simple tasks. Creating brightness, creating consistency, and getting rid of masking. And we're gonna be talking about those three things throughout this video. But before we get started, I wanna let you know we are giving away a free bonus for today giving away our entire treasure trove of mixing cheat sheets. These are the things that we've been designing for years now. There's stuff on EQ and compression and mixing vocals and reverb and all different types of things. There is absolutely something in there that will be helpful for you. So if this is something that you would like, go ahead and click the link on screen or down in the description below to get your own free personal access. I really do think you're gonna like it. So with that out of the way, I wanna show you what I'm talking about before we get into these three tasks. So I've got a song here called Will by an artist named JQ, just a mix that I'm working on. And I wanna kind of play this vocal mix. And I'm gonna start by playing it with all of my processing off. And then I'm gonna add my processing. And you're going to hear a big jump in volume. But I wanna let you know now, I haven't changed the volume fader at all nor have I turned up the volume in any of these plugins other than just regular old gain staging. You are getting an illusion of loudness, and it's part of the reason that the mix around it sounds so good. Look out and so for demons on your every word I'm leaning, dreaming one day all the goals that you gave me I'd be achieving. The view from here ain't seen it. It takes work to believe it, even more work to conceive it. Just trust that I done seen it. You can see it just vanished. All of a sudden it sounded so much quieter. And all I've done is done these three tasks. I've created brightness, I've created consistency, and I've gotten rid of masking. So let's talk about these. So when I say creating brightness, what I mean is using an EQ and making sure that what I've got going on up here is actually making the vocal sound closer to the listener. This is probably an EQ curve, not this stuff so much, this is just for tonal stuff, but up here, in the upper mids, in the, in the top end, it's probably an EQ curve you've seen before. It's pretty common in vocal mixing. And the reason for this is that the human ear actually perceives sounds that are brighter as being closer to the listener. So what that means is that we can take advantage of that. We can make something seem closer, seem louder, without actually turning the volume up. And this allows us, like I said, to get a mix where both the instruments and the vocals are loud. I'm not having to sacrifice one for the other. So let me show you a before and after on this. And you're gonna hear the brightness that I'm talking about. Is it subtle? Absolutely. It doesn't need to be anything but subtle. But it does feel like it's just inching a little bit closer to the actual listener. So looking at this next task, creating consistency. What do I mean by that? Well, what I'm talking about is compression, right? I am wanting to turn the loud sounds down and the quiet sounds up. The reason that I want to do this is that vocals are probably the most dynamic instrument that we typically deal with. There could be a note that is 12 dBs louder than the note before it, and it's not really that uncommon. It happens all the time. Now that makes setting a volume balance very difficult because you might set a volume balance where the loud notes feel perfectly balanced, but everything beneath it feels, well, you just lose it. You lose it in the context of the mix. And to get a professional vocal sound, you need to make sure that you can hear every single word. So one thing I will say, there's a lot of different ways that you can do compression. There's a lot of different combinations of settings that create different sounds. And I'm not really here today to cover all of that. So whenever I talk about using compression, I'm talking about 
consistency compression or leveling compression. Basically, it just means a fast attack, a slow release, and a high threshold. And the ratio can be set wherever you want. I'm just wanting to grab those loud notes, have the compressor stay on throughout the note, and then let go. And if I do serial compression, which you can see I've done, I've got two different compressors, one after another, that helps to massage those loud notes down even more so that I have consistency. So let me show you a before and after. So we'll start with after. Again, you could hear that every single time I turned those compressors off, it just felt like it faded into the background. And you can see on here, I was only ever getting two or three dBs of compression at a time. I wasn't getting massive amounts or anything like that. Now, I did do serial compression. You know, I did add a second compressor after this with the same settings, but a slightly lower threshold. But ultimately what that means is that I ended up getting probably somewhere between four and six dBs of compression, but you can't really hear a tonal difference. That's the important part of getting consistency compression right. Stuff feels like it fits in the mix, but no tonal changes actually happen. It's clean. So this is something that I'll do on top of gain automation, volume automation, other layers of compression that are achieving other goals, kind of like these two, which are both achieving some glue between my lead vocals and my doubles, as well as, uh, you know, mix bus compression and stuff along the lines of that. So now that we've created brightness and we've created consistency, now we need to do our third task, getting rid of masking. So if masking is a concept that you're unfamiliar with, it's basically an audio phenomena, a physics phenomena, where the perception of one sound is affected by the presence of another sound. So when two sounds are played at the same time, if they both have similar tones, they've got a similar amount of frequency energy in the same parts of the frequency spectrum, they are going to mask each other. And what that means is that I'm going to hear one sound tonally different simply because of the existence of this other sound. Now, if this is sounding kind of textbooky, let me break it down with an example. Let's say we have two different instruments, a piano and a guitar, and those two different instruments are playing two separate parts. It's not gonna be very difficult to hear those two instruments distinctly, right? You're gonna be able to tell there's a piano, there's a guitar. But let's say that those two instruments were playing the exact same part, same octave, same range, same tone, all the same stuff. Well, if you play them at the same time, your perception of their tone is going to be skewed. You're actually going to hear these two parts as sounding different than you would hear them in solo. Basically, it's gonna be harder to tell the two parts apart from each other. They're going to blend into each other. And in some cases, that's what we want. We want instruments to blend with each other. But in other cases, when we really wanna make sure that we can hear one distinct part, apart from all of the other instruments, that's something that we don't want. And that is absolutely the case with vocals. We don't want other instruments masking our vocals. We wanna hear the vocals loud and clear. So this is something that you're going to fix with an EQ, and it's something that you don't do on your vocals, you actually do it on everything else. What I like to do is known as the mute button method. So I'll go through my mix, and I will one by one mute different instruments. And I'm not actually listening to that instrument. I'm listening to the vocal. I'm trying to tell, is the vocal suddenly louder? Is it suddenly, am I able to hear it better all of a sudden? If not, then there's no masking going on. They're not fighting for the same space. But if there is, then I have now found an instrument that I need to grab an EQ and start making some cuts. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's really simple. I'm gonna go down to my keys and my strings, see if we can find something around in here. And you're just gonna see me go one at a time. Guidance over demons on your every word I'm leaning, dreaming one day all the goals that you gave me, I be achieving. The view from here ain't seen it. It takes work to believe. 
Okay, the piano sounded fine. You know, the vocals didn't really pop forward that much, so not any masking issues. Don't need to worry about it. Okay, now let's check out the main keys. But guidance over demons on your every word I'm leaning, dreaming one day all the goals that you gave me, I'd be achieving. The view from here ain't seen it. It takes work to believe it. Suddenly the vocals pop forward just a little bit more. So I know that I need to make some cuts in the main keys. Okay, now I want to check out the strings over here. But guidance over demons on your every word I'm leaning, dreaming one day all the goals that you gave me, I'd be achieving. The view from here ain't seen it. It takes work to believe it, even more work to conceive it. Just trust that I done seen it. I just That went away and it was just suddenly like the vocals just sped forward in the mix. So I definitely have a problem with my strings. I'm gonna wanna go, I'm gonna wanna grab an EQ. I'm gonna wanna grab a band and just sweep it around. Just sweep it around while I'm playing both the strings and the vocals. And again, I'm not listening to the strings, I'm listening to the vocals and I'm trying to find the spot where it is the hardest to hear the vocals. That is where the masking is happening. So let me do exactly that. But guidance over demons on your every word I'm leaning, dreaming one day all the goals that you gave me, I'd be achieving. The view from here ain't seen it. It takes work to believe it, even more work to conceive it. Just trust that I done seen it. I just pray I don't get caught up because things on earth be deceiving. Trying to get right before I leave it. Right there. It's the hardest to hear the vocals in that one spot. So I know, great. That's where I need to be making some cuts. Now, how deep you cut is totally up to your mix. How wide you cut is totally up to your mix. It's going to depend on the type of instrument, on where it was recorded, how it was recorded, all that junk. So I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. We'll see if it helps. But guidance over demons on your every word I'm leaning, dreaming one day all the goals that you gave me, I'd be achieving. The view from here ain't seen it. It takes work to believe it, even more work to conceive it. Just trust that. Yeah, that already popped forward just a little bit. And if I'm able to take out a little bit here, a little bit there in different instruments, a little is going to go a long way. So those are your three tasks, creating brightness in the vocal, creating consistency in the vocal, and getting rid of masking with all of the other instruments in the mix. There is one final bonus tip that I'm going to give you, and it deals with how you do your volume balancing. So whenever you're doing your volume balancing, most people will just turn all their faders down, you know, all the way to zero, and then they'll start bringing in one instrument at a time. Maybe the kick, maybe the snare, maybe the keys, you know, and then maybe the vocal. And one thing that a lot of people do, which makes total sense based on everything we've been talking about, is they'll set the level of that vocal way too loud because it's where it feels good at that moment with no processing. But now that you've watched this video, you know that you are going to be creating perceived loudness. You are going to be a magician. You're using sleight of hand to convince someone that a particular instrument is louder than it actually is. So what I would recommend you do, set your vocal level and then take it down a few dBs because it's probably too loud in comparison to where it's going to be after you've done all of your processing. So even though when you do that, the vocals will sound too quiet, that's totally okay. That's part of the game. That's going to force you to create this perceived loudness. It's gonna force you to create the illusion. That will make it easier for you to do masking. You're gonna to have to be more aggressive with your cuts. It's gonna make it easier to create brightness and create consistency because it'll be harder. That's the crazy thing, is because it's harder, the end result is better. Because it's harder, it's easier to get something great. So that's going to about wrap it up for me. Don't forget, we are giving away our free collection of mixing cheat sheets. If you are interested in this, and I, I really think that you would get a lot out of it, go ahead and click the link on screen or down in the description below. We've got stuff on all different topics of mixing. There's definitely something in there for you. And if you're new to this channel, please like and subscribe. We make tips and tricks and tutorials just like this one every single week on this channel, and we would really love to help you grow. So that's gonna be it for me. This has been Dylan Pines with Musician on a Mission, and remember, create regardless. Mm -hmm.